Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahua and the Torah channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for being a part of our family and for reading the book of Shimuel with us. And it was really nice to see a comment from Sister Carla yesterday, and she was talking about um, that she was really glad to see, I guess she had expectations of Yah's people, that they are... Um, they're holier than everybody else. That the people that Yah uses are <clears throat> very Kodesh in everything they do. And um, I will tell you, as as Boss Clan ourselves, um, we are very unKodesh. We are we have some very very unKodesh moments and some things. And our Creator has used us in a lot of different ways. Um, I think one of them is to get the scriptures out and to diffuse the Hallelujah scriptures to take that giant griff that was going for 13 years where nobody else could could break through that even though everybody knew it and everybody saw it they they, they just were not positioned in a position well enough that they were able to defend themselves and everybody that went against the Hallelujah scriptures went demoted and the Hallelujah scriptures worked for a solid year with with legal stuff with sending us paying to get us taken out all sorts of different things they couldn't do this now, one of the things in Samuel is that we <clears throat> we learn that the man after Yah's own heart, you know, that's soon to be King David, um, he had household idols in his house, right? He had an idol that his wife threw in the bed. Uh, she put some hair on it to try to trick her dad and the, the crews that were coming after him. And we learn there's a lot of times many, many, many people are not Kodesh. I mean, Shimuel himself, um, well, not Shimuel, maybe Eli, Eli, Eli himself, um, that was a, somebody who Yah walked with from his youth. And as he was, as he got older, he allowed his children to almost rape the women that were coming in for, um, for temple sacrifices and for various things. And he was, they were always extorting people. They were doing very, very bad things, but yet they used Eli <clears throat> to get to the part of Shimuel and Shimuel to get to the part of, of Shaul. And Shaul started off as a good guy, and then he, he lost his way. Um, and so all these people that Yah uses, right, we come out of the ditch. We come out of the gutter. And so it is not, um, if you're looking for, you know, the road forward, I don't think your expectation should be that you have had a completely Kodesh life because we are all raised up in Babylon. We've all been called out of Babylon. And it's a lot of us, you know, we're, we're very unkodesh, very unholy in a lot of things that we do. So, Sister Carly, you're not alone in this. And we're super, super, super glad that you spend time and all of you, our faithful five, that read with us. And um, we just are, are really lucky to have all of you guys out. We're really blessed. Baruch. Okay. Um, this is Yah's scriptures, guys. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, these are still available. I have not put the price up to 70 bucks yet. We will do that as soon as Mr. Cole gets some time. This is the last days of $64. It's 103 books. It is coming through very, very well. We still do not have a date as of when we will have them in our hands, but we have everything in place now. We have all of the people who will be in the States, a company in the States who will receive these and they will be shipping them out. And so um, Yah is blessing this and getting this out there. If you guys would like the free version of it, which hundreds of people a month download this, hundreds of, uh, there's just a lot of people that have downloaded these scriptures. Um, it's available in eSword. It's available in PDF. Uh, the Google app will be here very, very soon. Uh, if you guys want to help the prisoners, <clears throat> this these Amazon books right here, 100% of, the, of all proceeds, and there's only like $2 markup on any of these books, but out, that all goes to our prisoners and to help us get our um, scriptures into prisoners. We're trying to do a one for one for every scriptures that the the, the people on the outside are, are purchasing. That should help uh, get one full scriptures into our brothers and sisters in chains. And our brothers and sisters in chains are very worthy people. And a lot of people, you know, this is what Boss Clan it looks like our ministry is going to be about, is going to be about the prisoners and trying to get people to understand that a lot of people make a lot of very bad mistakes and a lot of people there's very very good people in prison they've done very bad things and there's no reason to to toss them out and our prisoners our brothers in chains are absolutely without a shadow of a doubt some of the most very receptive people that are out there when you are locked in chains when you have no hope when you are just really in a bad bad place this is where our creator will, will bring his presence to. 
And if we are able to get our brothers who are down in the dumps, who are able, who are just really have no way out but up to f read the scriptures of Yah, and we are able to minister to them and able to find hope and find some light in the darkness, that's what we're about. And our hopes and dreams is that we are, are working with these guys until they are paroled, until they are out of there, and then we continue on. And we, we encourage them not to fall back into their old stinking thinking and that stinking thinking that got everybody locked up the, the way they were. So with that, um, guys, please help the prisoners. You can help the prisoners by ordering Yah's scriptures. And again, we're, this is what Yah's scriptures is about. We are about getting prison prisoners scriptures. All right, gentlemen. Jade, give me a, a breakdown of where we are. We are in chapter 23 today. What happened in 22? What happened in 21? What What's the scoop? Well, we're back. Shavuot was obeyed, he got the rain taken from him and his children. Uh, Shemuel appointed Dawid, he went out to a little place in Judah, and he went and um, appointed him as a future king. Uh, Dawid started rising up in power in Shaul's army after killing Goliath. Um, and then uh, Shavuot started getting jealous because people started singing songs about how Dawid killed 10,000 and Shavuot only killed thousands. And he started getting um, scared that this dude was going to get rid of him and destroy him and his children. So he starts trying to kill Dawid, and he, uh, his, his own son betrays him and uh, saves Dawid, protects Dawid. Now Dawid is on the run. He moved his parents to a place outside of Israel, a place in, with Gentiles to protect them because Shaul is after his family as well. Yeah. Okay, so here we are, everyone. <coughs> 23. And they informed Dawid, say See, the Pelishites are fighting against Kayla, and they are plundering the threshing floors. So Dawid inquired of Yahuwah, saying, Shall I go and smite these Pelishites? And Yahuwah said to Dawid, Go and smite the Pelishites and save Kayla. Now, this is, you know, these are the differences between Joshua and David, right? Joshua did not consult Yah at the very first sign of issues that they had. In fact, that Joshua, as as amazing as he was of a leader he did some very very bad things that led to th things that we're seeing right here as well and um i don't even know where i was going with that i keep losing um, my train was a good guy he did better Heart than joshua. Takes, yeah so so um dawid is um you know when joshua made those um you know he didn't he didn't talk to you at all Whereas David, obviously right here, went and talked to Yah. And this is something that I, you know, we, can, we can look for on all of our lives, that when we are up against something, we either go at it ourselves, or do we include the creator of the universe, the one who knows everything that's going to happen, the one who knows the future, the one who knows the past, the one who knows everything. Do we include him? Do we ask him what his wishes are for us? Or, or do we just go at this fight alone? And when you have the hand of Yah, on your back because you have been patient and you have prayed and you have wanted and, and have received an answer, then the, the answer will be strong. Whether, whether it's a no or whether it's a yes, you will know that the hand of Yah is with you. And so this is, um, you know, lessons that we can all take for today's case. Okay, three. And Dawid's men said to him, see, we here in Yahudah are afraid. How, how much more then if we go to Kayla? All right, I'm going to pause real quick. All right. Everyone's sorry for the dogs. Um, not much we can do. Okay, three and a half. How much more then if we go to Kela against the armies of the Pelishites? So Dawid's men were freaking out, right? They're tripping. Um, they're, they're like, you know, uh, they're strong. They're really, really strong. Four, and Dawid inquired of Yahuwah once again. And Yahuwah answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kela, for I am giving the Pelishites into your hand. So Dawid and his men went to Kela and fought with the Pelishites, and he led away their livestock and smote them, a great smiting. Then Dawid saved the inhabitants of Kela. And it came to be, when Ebathar, son of Aklamek, fled to Dawid at Kela, that he went down with a shoulder garment in his hand. And Shaul was informed that Dawid had gone to Kela. Then Shaul said, Elohim has estranged him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. And Shaul summoned all the people to battle, to go down to Kela to besiege Dawid and his men. And Dawid knew that Shaul was plotting evil against him and said to Ebether the Kohen, bring the shoulder garment here. And Dawid said, O Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, your servant has heard for certain that Shaul seeks to come to Kela to destroy the city for my sake. Are the landowners of Kela going to surrender me into his hand? Is Shaul coming down as your servant has heard? 
O Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael, I pray, let your servant know. And Yahuwah said, he is coming down. Now, how do you think he heard this? Uh, now, do you think he, he prayed, had a dream at night? Do you think he uh, just prayed and the, the Shimaim opens up and Yah speaks to him? Does he hear the words in his head? How is he hearing this, these words where he goes to Yah and he, he's, he has this line of communication? Anyone? I don't know. I think it's the priest. You think it's the priest? With the right here it says, And David knew that Shah was plotting evil against him and said, Bring the Shalar garment to me, Shalar garment here. And David said, Oh, yellow, Yahoo, yellow, here, Israel. Mm. But I think it's uh, through. Um, so you, you think priest. it's through uh, Ebithar, yeah. the, the Kohen in here? I think so. Okay, so do you think he had the uh, ermine and the thumen, the little two Maybe rocks? He, I mean, he walked off with the Shalar garment. He might have had some other stuff he walked off with. Some rocks as well. Okay. All right, 12. Um, and Dawid said, uh, actually it's 13 for everybody paying attention. Thank you very much. Okay. 13. <clears throat> Is it 12? No, it's 12. Is it 12? 12. Oh, well, you survived Eli, but you look asleep. You have a Bible in front of you, but your, your eyes are closed. Okay. My hands open. Are you sure? Yep. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. 12. And Dawid said, are the an land owners of Kayla going to surrender me and my men into the hand of Shaul? And Yehoah said, they are going to surrender you. Then Dawid and his men, about 600, arose and left Kayla and went wherever they could go. And Shaul was informed that Dawid had escaped from Kayla and he ceased to go out. How do you secretly move 600 men? That's a lot of people like, stand like, it's like... Uh, well, they all have legs. Let's go, boys. So, I know, that's like a pack of ants. Like, you're not going to, like, not notice them. Well, he, it says right above that, um, they went out where they did. Where, where does it say that? Wherever they could go. Right, so it sounds like they all got um, scattered, is, is what it sounds like they did, and they and went wherever they could go. So it looks like yeah, they were scattered. Anyone else have anything on this? Mm -mm. Okay, fourteen. And Dawid remained in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in the hill country in the wilderness of Ziph. And Shaul sought him every day, but Elohim did not give him into his hand. And Dawid saw that Shaul had come to, out to seek his life while Dawid was in the wilderness of Ziph at Koresh. And Yohanathan, Shaul's son, arose and went to Dawid at Koresh and strengthened his hand in Elohim and said to him, Do not fear, for the hand of Shaul, my father, is not going to find you. And you are, go you are to reign over Israel, and I am going to be next to you. Even my father Shaul knows that. So a lot of, uh, a lot of thoughts, uh, you know, uh, from going from your father who's king to sitting beside David who's king. Um, that's, uh, you know, the Game of Thrones. That's a, that's a bloody battle to get to that point. Um, but it sounds like, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan knew this, um, or knew that something was going to happen. Although what he says never comes true, right? Yeah. He, he doesn't know, right? He, uh, he thinks cause he, you know, made the pact that they would, uh, protect each other for the, all the generations. They yeah. take care of each other's children. Yep. Yeah. And Jonathan dies right next to his dad. Okay. 18. <clears throat> and they made a covenant before Yahuwah and Dawid remained at Koresh while Jonathan went to his own house. And the Ziphites came up to Shaul at Gibeah, saying, Is Dawid not hiding with us in the strongholds of Koresh, in the hill of Kakilia, which is on the south of the wasteland? And now, O sovereign, by all the desire of your being, come down, come down. And our part is to surrender him into the sovereign's hand. And Shaul said, Baruch are you, Yahuwah, for you have sympathy with me. Please go. Please prepare, prepare yet further and find out and see the place where his hideout is. Who has seen him there? For I am told that he is very cunning. Um, he's very, so then I find 21 very interesting. That he's like, uh, Baruch of, are you of Yahuwah, for you have sympathy with me. So I think Shaul must have felt like a little bit um, like everybody was against him um, to to say something of this nature. Thoughts, anyone? Probably. Probably. Okay. What do we do? Please go, prepare yet further, and find out and see the place where his hideout is. Who has seen him? For I am told that he is very cunning. So look and learn all about the hiding places where he hides, and you shall come back to me with certainty, and I shall go with you. And it shall be, if he is in the land, that I shall search for him throughout all the clans of Yehuda. And they arose and went to Ziph before Shaul, while Dawid and his men were in the wilderness of Ma'an, in the desert plain on the south of the wasteland. And Shaul and his men went to seek him, and they informed Dawid. So they went down to the rock and remained in the wilderness of Maon. And when Shaul heard this, he pursued Dawid in the wilderness of Maon. And Shaul went on one side of the mountain, and Dawid and his, other, his men on the other side of the mountain. 
And Dawid was hurrying to get away from Shaul, for Shaul and his men were surrounding Dawid and his men to take them. Then a messenger came to Shaul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Pelashites have invaded the land. So Shaul turned back from pursuing Dawid and went against the Pelashites. Therefore they called the place Selahah Makala, Mecca Maklekoth. And Dawid went up from there and remained in the strongholds of Ayin Gedi. Now it's like an angel messenger or like a messenger? No, it's, messenger. A, it's like a foot messenger. Like a guy's like, hey, we got uh, issues in the land. Yeah. So it's like, this is a human. It's interesting. You know, um, do you think the people um, invaded the land because Shalul was taking all that time trying out there to try to find? Yeah, I think so. You think he could have protected his kingdom from that, the invasion? I think this is Yah's way of protecting Dawid and showing Shalul that there's more important things to deal with right now. Yeah, instead of fighting this young kid or trying to kill this kid, he's uh, yeah, which is a, which is a wild expedition, right? This is a, a wild thing to do. For just it's just a guy that like and he he literally left his side, like he left. He there's no threat, right? He's he's not going out there trying to take the throne from him. He's not out there making his life worse. He literally went his own way, went, went to live his own life. Yeah, but Shaul knows that Dawid is going to take the reign from his family, and so he's doing everything possible to keep this reign of. Thrones, keep this, this this Game of Thrones that they're playing right here, trying to make sure that he is the man. We kind of see that David's already gained power in certain areas where he's already based. There are people already following him. Yeah, and you know that he's he's the he's a marauder, right? We talked about it yesterday. He seems like the um, Robin Hood of the uh, this this world out there, right? He was fighting the the big evil darkness, uh, a lot like Robin Hood was, you know, in the story of Robin Hood that we have. So with that, everybody, <clears throat> I think that is good. Much love to everybody. We thank you guys for hanging out with us. We hope that you have a wonderful day. We hope that you guys are blessed. Please keep in prayer our prisoners for us, all of our prisoners. We have a big list. I think I'll be putting out a list of prisoner names for people to um, pray for. Probably just the first names to keep these guys anonymous. Um, but if you guys could keep them in prayer, I know Yah hears the words of those who are his. And these prisoners are this, this, this ministry that we are attempting to do. It's bearing fruit, and our brothers are, are bearing fruit in, in the prisons. And so um, that's the only sign that I could ever see of any fruit being bore is, is when the people are coming out of the prison and their lives are truly changed. And um, those are they're just good times and good news to hear. So thank you, everybody. Hope you have a good day. Shalom. All right, shalom.